Hello and welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV. And uh, last time we finished up harvesting our soybeans here. So we're going to go ahead and get what's left dumped out here into the grain cart and get started on our last big field of uh, soybeans here. It's a, a massive field though, so I don't think we're going to be able to finish it in a single episode. But we might as well uh, get things started and see how it goes here. I'm going to turn our flashers on as we uh, relocate. Luckily, we don't seem to see a lot of traffic down this dirt road, but the main road out here is going to have a, uh, a bit of traffic, I'm thinking. Now, if y'all remember uh, at the beginning of the series here, we actually had, I think, corn out in uh, this big field, and we uh, chopped silage out of that, which took quite a bit. So I'm kind of excited to uh, be doing soybeans on this big field. Uh, if for no other reason, then it's going to be a lot less uh, trips back up to the farm with the uh, truck delivering the grain. And hopefully I can squeeze in here with my header. We're not taking out any signs today, at least not yet. But uh, yeah, it's going to take a minute to uh, harvest this whole field. We're also going to have to... Uh, figure out if we can make it all the way around. I don't think we're gonna make it around the headland pass here to uh, get this field opened up. So we'll have a, a little bit of fun handle on that. Uh, what I am gonna do is before we get course play started off on this, uh, because I do have a lot of other jobs we want to do on the farm today, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, open it up a little bit, give us some room to move around uh, without getting completely hung up on things. I want to have a, enough uh, space here so that we can uh, get a truck in here, get the grain cart in here, and kind of move around. Even if we are going to have course plate coming by again on the headland passes, uh, it'll let us at least uh, pull in here and then maybe turn around and pull off onto the grass. Um, I'm thinking the truck can sit right along there on the grass. That'll be a good spot for it to start out with. So we're just going to cut ourselves a little bit both left and right here that way we've got the room available and just opening up this a little bit of the field in the the front here has already put us at five percent of our hopper capacity so i know we're not going to make it all the way around this field that's all right i'd rather have some excellent yields and have to make a bunch of uh, trips up with the truck to the farm and uh, just kind of get over having to manage it, then have a less uh, crops available. So I'm not complaining, I'm looking forward to seeing how many bushels we get off of this field actually. Just out of curiosity, we are so far at 102, almost 103,000 liters, unfortunately. Uh, unit convert, not able to convert this screen over for us. So I'll have to check in and see how we're doing after we get this field uh, all harvested. But in the meantime, I'm going to make sure our course play course is all cleared off here. And we're going to just jump in here real quick and uh, make a quick course. I liked having three headland passes. I thought it worked uh, really well for us. We'll start on the headlands. We'll do lands. And six rows seem to work pretty good. So I'm going to just uh, go with the same settings we used on the last field. And let's see what it looks like. And that's looking like a uh, great course for us here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. We've finally learned our lesson on setting reasonable uh, start points on our courses. So I'm just going to get us up here to the first waypoint so we're not uh, skipping a bunch and driving over things. And then we'll start it off. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. I'm going to go grab the grain cart here now and get this run out to the field we might even attempt to set up uh the auto drive uh unloader here or uh maybe the course play uh grain cart because i don't have to record a course or do anything crazy for the course play uh grain cart driver so we might actually try and leverage him in this field after we get things opened up i don't want to deal with it uh when we're not opened up uh that's just asking for too much trouble so I'm going to run this over here real quick to the field and we'll uh, we'll probably just go ahead and catch up with the combine right away. Make sure we get this field opened up before we jump over to our next job. 
Looks like the combine is uh, cutting that corner out real nice. I like that. I forget which mode we've got it set in, but since that was a sharp corner, he did a great job and got it all for a change, which is amazing. I love uh, when Chris plays uh, doing things the right way, so to speak. So we're up here at the field. I think it makes sense to just go ahead and see if we can find enough room to unload on the way down there. I think there's a bit of a grass strip over there. We'll find out. It's been a minute since we've been out in this field. Oh yeah, there's plenty of grass over here. There is a, a bit of a embankment there uh, as we get into the, I don't know if that's a creek or just some drainage in the ditch, but I think once I get past this little area right there, we'll have enough to unload for a little bit. Oh, our cruise control didn't quite kick in there like I'd hoped. There we go. Uh, it doesn't help that we're in 18th gear. Let's uh, drop that down a few. There we are, handling the hill like a champ. Now, we are uh, running out of uh, area here quite quickly, but I want to keep going and get as many of these beans out of the hopper as we can until I run out of space here. Hopefully make it to the corner. Uh, looks like the hopper's empty, but we're going to just uh, keep going here for the last couple of bushels, and then uh, we'll let this guy do his thing. I'm going to run back up and bring a semi out here, I think, next and get that all set up. Uh, I think we could just actually leave this tractor right here because I'm gonna have to go catch up with the combine in just a minute. And we'll just jog back up to the farm here. It's uh, right down the road. Not gonna take us but a minute. And we've got the uh, Kenworth all hooked up here to the trailer, which will work out great for us. Get this run right out there. All right, I'm trying to think the best place to park this, but also be able to get back out the driveway here is probably right behind where I'm at. So I'm going to swing wide and see if I can uh, handle turning this around on the headland here without completely jackknifing it. Going to be a tight fit by that guard wire, but uh, we've got it. All right. I said guard wire, I should have said guide wire. My goodness. There we are though. We're all uh we're all cattywampus. Oh, let's straighten this out actually. That's not gonna do at all. And I'm getting a little close to the telephone poles here, so I'm gonna back this up so I've got enough room to swing wide out into that driveway when the time comes. And I'm just realizing if I am gonna use the course play. Uh, unloader for the grain cart. I might need to have the tires for this thing on the field or be pretty close to it just to make sure that course play can find it when it's doing its search. So we're gonna put the wheels right onto the edge of the field like so and just checking in on our combine here. We did make it all the way around the bottom part of the field which is pretty good and we might even make it that back down to the far end now before we get full. We're at 44% uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that grain cart and bring it back out here to the uh, other corner of the field here. We've been so terrible at estimating capacities in the last few episodes. I'm taking a risk by not following the combine around in its tracks, but uh, I can't imagine it's going to get another 50% capacity before it gets to that uh, far corner. So we're going to take this way because it's a bit shorter and a bit straighter to get up there to that corner and really hope that we haven't once again underestimate, underestimated our capacity. I can see them coming around the corner and I've also didn't take into account all these telephone poles. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, unload alongside that even if I had gotten up there in time. So I'm going to pull over here and we'll swing around as he starts his second headland pass and start unloading. The good news is he should be able to make it all the way around the next uh, headland pass without needing to be unloaded, I'm thinking, based on our current performance. Oof, I caught a uh, row of beans there, unfortunately. Oh, our semi's in the way. Just in the way. I, I would have thought he'd uh, started moving over, but I forgot the starting point was actually quite a bit further back here, so that's my bad. All right, well, now that we've dealt with those shenanigans, we've got to 
hurry up and get in this tractor and see if we can get over here and unload the combine before it gets full. I can see the mound growing, but luckily I don't think we're quite at full, so we'll be able to once again unload on the long row down here. Should work out good for us. I like that he's doing the uh, hard corners like this. It means we're not going to have any crops left sitting in this corner. And here we go. Looking good. Look at all those soybeans. In fact, this may just about uh, fill us up to bring a truck up to the yard. We've already got 700 bushel here, and we can put uh, just under a thousand, if I'm not mistaken, in the, the uh, semi here. The combine's slowing down a little bit on this hill. We've got to work to match the speed. Uh, we're getting into right around 900 bushels, so not quite going to uh, have enough to top off the semi. But I think what we're going to do is let the combine continue from here. Uh, it was able to make a full round last time, so I'd expect it to be able to do that again. And I'm going to take this back up. We're going to dump it into the semi. That way, when we get back up here... Oh, I'm driving over a row again. We've got to uh, stop wasting beans like that. But uh, once we get up here and get unloaded, once the uh, combine comes back down, we'll be able to unload and have enough capacity to fully unload it. I think if I weren't to empty the grain cart right now and the combine came back around we'd get full with the grain cart and then uh, I don't know if it'd make the next round and everything falls apart at that point so we'll go ahead and get emptied out real quick and then we'll jump over to the farm we've got a bunch of miscellaneous things to get started on while the uh, combine does its thing I think the first thing that we need to do is get that uh, slurry spreader uh, brought over from the other farm. Now, this is a horrible idea. I don't know why I'm trying to unload on this side of the semi. Let me uh, rethink my life choices. And we'll spin back around here and unload on the field side. This will be easier once I have another headland pass off. We just don't quite have enough room down here for maneuvers. But knowing that the slurry spreading is a, such a slow job and having to run back and forth up to the farm uh, in order to refill is going to take a while. We need to get that guy brought over here to the uh, the bean field we just finished harvesting last episode and get him started on spreading that slurry. It looks like we did leave him off at the uh, field edge here, which is fine. We'll go ahead and bring him up to the farmyard and top off the slurry tank before we head out there. No sense driving all the way out to the field with 4% left in the uh, tank. And uh, while we're driving, let's see, this is going to be changing over to field, I think it's 7 over there that we're going to hit up. So we'll see how well this works. And I could totally let auto drive actually just do this at this point. But instead, I think I'm going to uh, continue to take control and load up this tank myself. It's been a minute since we've actually driven back here and loaded a manure tank. There we go. Trying to navigate all these twists and turns. I'm honestly kind of surprised I even got auto drive to be able to do this. I can barely do it. And while I normally hate backing things up with articulated tractors, I feel like uh, in this situation it actually makes it just a little bit easier because I can really pivot and uh, get in there very quickly. We're going to drive up on this. I don't think I'm supposed to drive on that part, but you know what? It's uh, there. It's convenient. We're going to do it. And I'm going to load out of the back one because I think the uh, auto drive set up to load out of the front slurry pit here. So we might as well uh, take our manual dump from the rear. That sounded way worse than I meant it to. And with that all filled up, let's go ahead and run out to this field. It'd be so nice if we had like a little uh, land bridge or something over the creek right here. We could get right over to that field as opposed to having to drive all the way around. But alas, there is no bridge. So we've got to take the road. And we left a semi in our way, so we got to get this guy out of the way so we can get our slurry spreader moved out here. I feel like uh, farming is 50% uh, relocating equipment around the yard sometimes. 
Always moving stuff out of the way. All right, we're all set. Let's get this thing uh, moved out to the field. We've got almost 9,500 gallons of slurry in the tank. That should last us for quite some time. And I'm really hoping it kind of saves the course play settings per vehicle so I don't have to remember how we set that up. It worked really well for the last uh, field. And so I'd love to just reuse the same course generation settings. But I don't recall if because I um, generated a course on a different piece of equipment, if that's going to be all messed up now or uh, if it saves those uh, kind of defaults from the last time you did a course per vehicle. But we're about to find out. It looks like our combine is uh, almost full there. I'm not going to worry about switching over to take care of that right now, though, because this slurry spreading job is going to be so much slower. Uh, than our harvesting job. It looks like our combine's actually doing a pretty good job of getting ahead there. So we got to focus on the jobs that are going to be the slowest and take the longest and get them done. I am mildly curious, though, if I push this button, is this guy going to drive out to field seven on his own? Uh, looks like he's finding the point. So there's no major errors in finding the field seven point, at least, which is a good news. I always forget to test my auto drive and courses when I set them up and then we sometimes run into problems because I'm not always the best at uh, making sure everything got hooked up right and there's no turns that are too sharp that a course is unnavigable. Navigatable? Navigatable? We're gonna let him take the corner here. I'm kind of curious just to make sure that the trailer's not gonna go in the ditch and we're gonna get stuck and all that good stuff. So. Let's see how it does. The steering on the manure spreader really helps out with this. This is working out perfectly. Okay, with that out of the way, let's see how our create job is going to work out. We're up here in field seven. Field position is going to be right there. Course generation. We did six headland passes before. I think that was maybe a few too many. I don't think we needed six. I'm gonna turn that down to four on this field. I know I just got done saying how well everything worked out, but I think we're gonna do four and call that a good. I don't know why I have a rows to skip a four in rows per land of six. I usually don't use the two of these together. Oh, I'm doing up down, so I don't have any lands mode set. Perfect. So we're skipping four rows. I'm down with that. Let's generate this. Looks like a reasonable course to me. So we're going to go ahead and let this guy do his thing. First waypoint. Start us off. We're going to do the headlands last like... Uh, we did on the other field. I think that's going to work out perfectly. And before we forget, we're going to turn on the course play integration here to uh, make sure we can handle that. And looking good. All right. At some point, I'm going to have to catch this guy up in the yard. We forgot to refuel it. We're getting down under half a fuel tank, but uh, that's a problem for a another uh, another time. I think we're feeling pretty good here. Everything looks good. We're going to let this guy go, see if we get any errors when he tries to uh, unload. However, that means it is time to grab the grain cart and keep this harvester moving. As soon as we get this unloaded, though, we should have some free capacity. The next job that I want to do is we're going to go and try and clean out that silage I've got, or not the silage, the chaff we've got uh, piled inside that shed. We're going to try and get that into the ag bagger. And I've got a lot of thoughts on how I could do that. I've had a lot of suggestions in the last couple of videos, but I think we're just going to lease a uh, wheel loader and see if we can move that the uh, old fashioned way. I may have regrets. We may end up uh, getting a belt or something to move it out at the end of the day, but I think we're going to start with a wheel loader. And of course, this guy wants to unload on the go, which I'm normally very amenable to, but I'm worried he's going to try and have me unload him around this corner, which is going to prove to be difficult. Yep. 
beans everywhere. Trying to keep that track off of the uh, header and it's not uh, working out so well. I do want to finish getting them unloaded just because it works easier when I can unload on the long straight rows when I'm, I guess, uh, paying more attention, but we'll just uh, do what we can. The unloading on these jagged headlands are always kind of uh, dicey. I'm just, uh, I'm way too close. I don't know why I'm crowding him so much. Give him a little bit more space here. Should work out better. There we go. I like that a lot more. All right, looks like he's empty. I'm going to just leave this here because I have no idea where we're going to be. Or actually, no. I'm going to drive this up to the semi and we're going to go get that semi unloaded because we've got enough to uh, finish that off. I think that'll be a better use of our time. We can empty the semi and get it brought up to the yard and uh, that'll let us uh, be up in the yard and we can figure out at least in this wheel loader. And that's right. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a bit in here already, so this should definitely top us off. There we go. Still got a uh, few hundred bushel in the grain cart. And the nice thing about being so close up to the farm is this is going to take but a minute to get up there and get everything unloaded. Whoa! That was a little close. And I love the sounds on this truck. We are going to come through the yard the quote-unquote right way this time. I feel like I'm much better at uh, bringing it into the dump shed here with a lower probability of getting stuck on things. If I come up from this angle, the other angle is just such a uh, tight turn coming in that I always uh, end up getting hung up on something. So we'll continue to try and approach this from the right way. And there we go. We're all emptied out. I'm not going to drive this back to the field just yet. I'm just going to pull it out of the shed here a little bit. If for whatever reason we need to drive through here with another vehicle. There we are. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to justify the expenditure, but we ended up leasing this huge Volvo L180 that uh, came in the Platinum uh, DLC. I'm pretty sure this is going to fit into our shed. And the reason we did that is it's got the biggest uh, bucket that we could find at 10,000 liters. So I'm really hoping that we can uh, make quick work of getting this silage out of here with the uh, large bucket. And uh, if this works out, great. If it doesn't, we'll go grab a belt or something to get this stuff out of here the easy way. Oh yeah, look at that. These uh, I always feel like this uh, barn is so short, but this is a huge piece of equipment and we had no problems getting in here, so. Oh look, our slurry spreader's going right out there. Very nice. Let's see what uh, this looks like on the inside. Not too shabby. Let me close out of a few excess windows here. And there we go. We've got 13 cubic yards of chaff. Well, we barely made a dent there, so that's going to make things interesting. And let's see if I can manage to get out of this back door. I think this back door might be a little skinnier than the other one. Make sure my bucket's tipped up. I don't want a lot of chaff all over on the ground. And I'm hoping I can actually dump this in with a bucket. Now, before I do this, I think this tractor needs to be running. I'm not sure, but we're going to turn it on if for no other reason than the realism. And, uh, oh, look at that. You can see we've already got 117 yards in there, and it's at 44%. And this is, what, another 13? Not too bad. All right, let's see. This might be a little difficult to do in cab. You know, for the first one at least, I'm going to go out of cab. I just want to make sure I'm in an approximate location and it's actually getting dumped into the uh, machine here. There we go. 
everything look good. I don't see any chaff on the ground, so we'll run with it. All right, for all other things, though, being in cabin, this thing is one of the few vehicles that I feel like we've had good visibility with. Man, that's a tight fit. And this is where I wish I had my uh, joystick set up, but uh, we are mousing it for today, unfortunately. So we'll have to uh, see if I can maybe get a joystick set up. That would be awesome for using loaders. And we're getting through this door without any major problems. I like it. But uh, yeah, 13 yards at a time. This might take a minute. All right, we're going to try, folks. Whoa, brakes. Can I guess the distance successfully? I don't know if I'm too far or... Okay, we're going to cheat one more time. I just want to see. I'm farther than I think I am. All right. So if I wanted to be... Yeah, now I can see it. Let's call that good. Oh, perfect. All right, I think I've got it for next time. AI worker Sarah has a full grain tank. All right, well, let me just uh, put this back in the shed with a full bucket, and we'll uh, switch over and get that combine unloaded. We lost track of things. We're having so much fun. Oh, perfect. I thought I was going to hit the door for a second there. I do wish this thing was not a uh, gear drive. We could be going so much faster. I'm having to switch my gears all the time. All right, let me shut this down for a minute. We'll, uh, we'll come back to doing this job in just a second. Conveniently, though, it looks like the combine has not only finished the headlands, but started working on the lands mode here. And so we're set up with our auger in a very convenient position for me to get back to. Squeeze around here. There's just enough room to make the turn if you uh, cut it tight. So I think what I'm going to do... Uh, after we get done uh, unloading him right here is I'm gonna set this guy up to unload combine I think I'm trying to remember how this works I think he just is usually when you've got a grain cart attached to a tractor or something like this it's uh, in combine unloading mode but I don't see that here right now uh, because I think if I hit yeah I can't hit play or do anything so, for whatever reason, this tractor and grain cart combination isn't giving me that option, which is really unfortunate. So, I'm going to just uh, pull this guy up here out of the way for now, so that he's not getting a run into when we turn around. And uh, we'll just keep hopping over here when we see the message. If we, real quick, check in here on our uh, manure spreading. It looks like we're doing awesome. I don't know why we're going so close out here to the edge of the field in some of these situations that looks uh somewhat odd to me but it is what it is i suppose he hasn't gotten stuck yet but i guess maybe we did actually need those six headland passes uh that we had because this is putting us right out there on the outside of the field edge and if we had uh more trees or something like we got up in this corner that could definitely be a problem. Oh well, we'll worry about that when it happens. However, for right now, we gotta keep moving some of this chaff, see if we can get this silage bag all filled up. We've got, I don't know, I think we're gonna have probably about 10 loads before we fill up the silage bag, although I gotta make sure it doesn't extend past these bins and into the uh, uh, driveway area there. And we definitely did not square ourselves up here. Oh no, we weren't close enough and we dumped it all over the ground this time. Or we were too close, one of the two. Either way, let's see if we can uh, fix our mistakes by putting the bucket down here. Still got a little bit on the ground here under the tongue. Oh, I don't want to be moving this thing. No, stop. All right, we'll call that good enough. We'll have to try and figure out how to clean some of that up later. I think in the meantime, though, we might uh, we might have to pay a little bit more attention here. Maybe use the external camera just a little bit more to make sure we're not making a huge mess. Although, we'll see if that actually ends up helping in the grand scheme of things. There we go. 
and it looks like our ground is not as flat here as I'd hoped, so this uh, silage bag is kind of hovering in midair here a bit, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to try and at least take the bits that are oozing out of the enclosure next. See if we can kind of clean up our barn a bit. Seem to be having a hard time scooping that up. Yeah. Well, what do you know? Well, we'll go for the big scoops now and worry about clean up a little bit later, I guess. I'm going to be really frustrated if I can't get that stuff off of the floor, though. And let's see if we can do a little bit better job this time. Nope, nope, nope. It's going all over the ground. Oh, because I'm nowhere near it. Wow. Okay. My perspective is way off today. This is uh, going to be a very painful job if we don't get our act together. I think it's the sun and the way the shadows and everything work is like throwing me off a few feet. All right, I'm not going to bother cleaning up the mess until we're done, because otherwise I'll be spending all my time cleaning up after each load when I know we're just going to make a mess the next load. So we'll just uh, keep going here. And we'll do one more load, and then I think I've got to go and... Oh, we hit the shed. Uh, I think we've got to go and check in on the combine here. I'm sure it needs to be unloaded by now. We've probably just missed the message while we were goofing off with all of this. I have a tendency to get very distracted with uh, jobs like this. It does look like we're making a dent in this chaff, though, so I'm encouraged that uh, maybe we'll be able to get through this quicker than I thought. Man, the brakes are just uh, non-existent on this thing. I feel like the volume of this bucket, like just looking at it visibly, and how much chaff we've got in this bunker should have been like maybe 10 loads. Like I feel like we're having to make a lot more loads than visually there is chaff. Like I don't understand how this works out from a volume perspective, but uh, we're making a dent. I just think we should be close to done by now after this many trips and this big of a bucket. And there it is. The tank is empty. That must be my slurry uh, tanker. So we'll go check in on that and make sure it's figuring things out. It can't calculate a path. That's unfortunate. That's what I was worried about. All right, so it's here and it's saying it can't calculate a path. Oh, lost everything. Well, let's see here. All of my stuff is currently turned off. Let's see. Can't calculate a path. All right, so we've got an auto drive issue, that means. So I'm going to bring this back up to the entrance and see what happens when we're a little bit closer. Usually I don't have to put the point right on the uh, field to get it to work, but maybe in this case we'll have to drag that point a little bit closer to the edge of the field. I'm not sure. But I suspect it's more that the uh, path itself is messed up. Because uh, now I'm close enough. And yeah, it can't reach the slurry pit following this field. <coughs> oh, because I don't think we ever finish creating the road back. I'm not, uh, not all there today. Let's uh, go ahead and do that real quick. That'll be an easy fix to this problem. Here we are. And record. I just need to straighten out our starting point a smidge so that it's not so crooked. There it is. And off we go. We should only have to do this straight out to the blacktop road and then we can connect to the path that's already there. So this is... Uh, only a minor inconvenience. I'm kind of staying away from these telephone poles because if I do try to use this uh, path with something that's a little bit wider than this, it's going to be a, a major problem for us. This is where for these dirt roads, that's why I've been doing a single two-way course down the middle. 
probably should have done that on this one too. I don't know why we didn't do that, but alas, it is what it is at this point. And I'm going to just drive this straight out into the middle of the road. We're going to stop recording. And then we're going to, whoa, connect that to there. And now I should be able to get to the slurry pit. Perfect. All right. The only thing we got to check now is that uh, this slurry uh, tank can get through the gate coming from this direction. Once we're in the farmyard, everything else should just work. But getting into the farmyard uh, from this side with this big tank is one thing that we haven't tested yet. Although I think I can get through with a semi, so I'd assume this can handle it because it does have the uh, steering wheels on the back. It's looking pretty good to me. Looking good, looking good. All right. Well, I'm really disappointed that I can't use the uh, course play combine unloader here for this, but it is what it is. So we're going to just uh, keep trucking. Maybe I'll put a different tractor on here in a little bit. I don't know what I'd put on here, though. I could switch the slurry spreader out, I suppose, and put this on the slurry tank and put the other big tractor on here. But I don't know. I just don't feel like that fits as well. So we're at, we're already a third of the way or more done with this field. So we'll go ahead and just uh, keep doing this one manually. I think it'll be uh, over in no time. Going to get in reverse and get ready to... Uh, scooch out of his way here as soon as we get the tank emptied out there we go all empty let's uh get out of the way although it does look like he was being can uh considerate and not uh trying to crowd me he was giving me the time so course play has come a long way i'll have to say from the earlier days especially just even in fs22 i've enjoyed uh seeing it progress quite a bit here um, I think what I'm going to do is leave him in the middle of the field here, but put the pipe in so that when the uh, combine comes back by, he doesn't uh, swipe me with his own pipe. And I'm just going to leave him there. We don't have quite enough to fill up the truck yet. Looks like our slurry tank is figuring out how to uh, get back out to the field. Uh, unfortunately, because course play got stopped completely... I don't know if it's going to pick back up where it left off or not. So we might have to drive this guy back out to the field and uh, or drive him back out to where he left off and help him get started here. We'll see uh, how this happens, but he's got a couple minutes to do that. So let's hop on out here and get the silage moving again oh i jumped into this tractor to see how far we were and completely didn't pay attention 72 percent so yeah we can just uh keep loading this up for sure just jumping back out here into the field to check on our slurry spreader and he did indeed figure out how to get back out here and start uh working on his point without any interaction from me which is amazing, so I'm uh, super excited about that. Uh, course play auto drive interaction is working amazingly. All right, well, with that off of my mind, uh, something I don't have to worry about, this job should now just uh, get itself finished without any more interaction. And, um, you know, honestly, we're already working on the second pass all the way through, so, you know, we're a uh, solid, what, quarter of the way done not quite a quarter of the way done but we'll say a sixth of the way done with this field doing awesome and looking in on our uh combine here we've got a good chunk of this field already done we're getting some good yields out here we're in the green i'm digging it we're gonna have a, a lot of soybeans to sell off here in july or so i think uh, is when the high point is so i'm looking forward to that Honestly, I think uh, harvest is going way better than I kind of expected it to. We've got a, a good groove going here. We got lots of jobs moving at the same time, which is always nice. And I think this is going to be a great place to wrap up the episode. And we'll check back in next time and figure out what we're going to do with that cornfield that we uh, didn't get to for uh, chopping. We'll probably put the corn header on the combine here and actually harvest some corn and see how this uh, corn dryer is working out for us. 
Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you did, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Um, that's all for today. Kedrick, out.